Welcome to the In the Money podcast for Thursday, October 24th. Just three days left in this fall meet at Keeneland. I'm Tom Leach, along with Jim Goodman, Keeneland's Director of Wagering Development. No stake on the Thursday card, so we'll just take a look at the late pick four, which starts in the sixth race, Jim, with a long one on the turf, a mile and three sixteenths. Non-winners of one other than. Where did you land? Yeah, there's a lot of sequences we've done uh, over the course of the last 13 days or 14 days um, that I was just confused. But this sequence, I've, I've got a pr- couple of strong opinions, and one of them's in this race. Uh, I think too deep here is all you need to go, especially if Bluegrass Parkway runs. Um, as we're taping this, uh, he has entered into the Wednesday card, and I'm not sure if he'll get in or not, but he scratches out of there and goes here. I like Bluegrass Parkway a lot here. Uh, that race at Belmont only got beat by half a length. Uh, loses Ortiz, but picks up Lay Peru, who's uh, leading the jockey standings at Keeneland doing, and running, uh, riding outstanding this year. And then if Bluegrass Parkway doesn't run, I like Mr. Alec uh, for uh, B.J. Hernandez and uh, Christoph Clement uh, off a, a great effort at Belmont, breaking his maiden. Had two great races right out of the out of the box. First two first two starts are uh, 80 and 87 buyers. So I'm going to stick with those two here in the sixth race. Uh, that's a strong exacta. And, and if Bluegrass Parkway scratches out, I'll probably single Mr. Alec because I really didn't see anything else in here that, that stacked up. There's some other horses that are all kind of bunched together if those horses don't run. But uh, maybe uh, Sir Kali for um, uh, Archibald Kingsley coming over from um, from Ireland has run already at the, at the meet and didn't run great, 32 to one, um, first time in North America. Looks like he's a notch below here, but you always look at the foreign horses. But uh, I'm gonna stick with Mr. Alec and Bluegrass Parkway, the eight and the nine, sixth race. Yeah, I'm on the the same two. In fact, I uh, picked Bluegrass Parkway for Wednesday. Should he draw into the race? Um, so uh, I like that one uh, a lot, and that uh, improved race coming off the the layoff and run well here before. I did, uh, when we get to the pick four, there were some others I'm going to use. Martial Law, and these are just kind of in the hopes of maybe catching a price because I think there's a uh, maybe some a couple of big favorites later, or at least one big favorite later on. Martial Law, uh, the runner-up in his last race, came back to win. Um, Phantom Currency maybe um, has a little bit of a shot. The In the three, uh, at 20 to one, I'm going to throw in, just because um, this horse... Um, showed improvement uh, off the layoff. And on that angle, I'm going to take a little shot with the uh, the three in here. Seventh race is at a mile on the 16th, allowance optional claimer. And I went to DAC attack. Uh, I think those are two nice runs in the two starts off the layoff. And this horse is bred to handle the, the stretch out and look like he was going to be a good one. And uh, he's had some issues, uh, certainly, but... Uh, third start off the layoff, and um, I think uh, he's ready to run a, a big one. But this is a nice field. No dozing. has got some back class, and the Delacour horses have run well, so I want that one. Blue Ridge Traveler, uh, actually uh, used last time, played that one in the uh, Lucas Classic, and he ran okay. He ran fourth off a, a nice win previously. Uh, Major Cabby was really impressive in winning here, and I like those runback horses within the meet, but I think this is a... Uh, big step up, so um, uh, I ended up going to Dak Attack in here. How about you? Yeah, I'm right with you. The last one that you mentioned, Major Cabby and Dak Attack, are, are the two horses that I would put in the exacta here. Uh, Dak Attack, I watched him since last uh, since June of 17 when he broke his maiden and went to Ellis Park and won the juveniles down there on a day that they had a contest that I was lucky enough to uh, play second in, and I saw him uh, back to back with a Peak Philly. Uh, I'm sorry, with Brad Cox Philly. And at that point, I mean, he was looking at derby time. And then he had some issues and was off for a while. But he looks like he's back and has run two good races in a row, one at Ellis and one at Churchill. So I like Dak Attack. I like Blue Ridge Traveler um, to get the money for McPeak. I like Rocking the Boat, the five for Dale Romans. And I'm also going to use No Dozing for Delacour. So pretty much the same horses that you're on. Dak Attack would be my win bet, and Major Cabby would be my exact in here. Takes us to the allowance feature, non-winners of four other than uh, going a mile and a 16th on the turf, uh, Phillies and Mares. Uh, I think Daddy is a legend is uh, going to be a real low price in here. Can you beat her? Uh, I'm not going to try to beat her. I, I think this is a single in the uh, in the pick four. If you single in the first leg, if one of those two horses doesn't get in or, does, or scratches out, you might go deeper here, but... Uh, 
there is something in the daily racing forum when you look at buyer figures called a triple fig advantage. And the last three races that Daddy is a Legend has run, 100, 198. I couldn't find anybody anywhere close to that in this in this race. Um, you know, all the, there's a 93 there for Lamari, which would probably be my second choice for Brad Cox, just because it's Brad Cox and Le Peru, and and there is some um, a race back in her history on yielding turf that that was the best one of her career, but. Daddy's a legend. If she shows up here, she she towers over this field, I think. So that would be my single in the pick four. Uh, one thing that worries me, she's only 313 lifetimes. She's always run well, but she doesn't really um, – maybe she doesn't finish races as well, but she's run against grade one, grade two competition. Uh, loses Manny Franco, who didn't come down for the ride, but picks up Santana. So I'm going to stick with Daddy as a legend. I would put Lamari uh, under her in a trifecta wheel possibly – along with Smart Emma and Vagabond Princess. But Daddy is a legend. Looks like a standout here. Yeah, I'm uh, on the same page with you here. We we don't have a lot of variety. Some days we have uh, a lot of uh, difference in uh, our tickets. Uh, I think today they're going to look pretty similar because um, I, I see the race the same way. She's worked well here as well. She's run well here before. Um, so no reason to, you know, the, the only thing is, you know, just if she's not, a hundred percent cranked up off the layoff and, and somebody upsets her, but, uh, she looks awfully strong to me. So we'll move on to the ninth race. It's, uh, at, at about seven furlongs, the uh, beard course distance, just uh, a shade beyond seven furlongs claiming race for three-year-olds exclusively. And, uh, I went to the two, he's no bull here. This one has some good speed and Shire is good off the claim. Um, so on those two angles, I ended up on the two, the five, uh, Senior Friday, uh, the uh, Diodoro Barn has uh, done well with a limited number of starters, and they seem to be um, as, over the last few days of the meet uh, firing more shots. So um, maybe they're uh, it was a part of a strategy. Anyway, Senior Friday, I think you got to uh, look at Kalu the four on the class drop. Uh, if you want to go one deeper, uh, Jazar dropping in class as well. So. Uh, that's how I see the ninth race. No real strong opinion. How about you? Yeah, I had no real strong opinion either. So when we get to pick four, I'm going to use them all because I've, I've got plenty of money left since I singled and it only went too deep. Um, I think Kalu would be my win pick in here simply because there is some room for improvement. Only two lifetime starts. Uh, Owen Hardy is a is a good trainer. And uh, coming from Presque Isle may not get much play here, but those horses that come off that synthetic are always fit. So, um that's a question mark on these twenty thousand dollar claimers uh, if they are in good form or not. So Kalu would be my pick here, but going to go deep in the pick four. Well, give us your pick four ticket then. Pick four is pretty simple today. Uh, it is eight nine in the first, and with the five horses we talked about, with Dak Attack being my pick in the in the second leg. But I'm going to go two four five seven nine in there. Certainly, Major Cabby has a big shot at the seven. Going to single Daddy's the legend. The two in the third leg. And then go all in the last leg, and that only costs forty-five bucks. So eight nine with two four five seven nine with two with all. I'm going to take probably uh, a, a wrong-headed uh, approach to trying to hit a price on the front end and use five horses: two, three, eight, nine, ten. Then two four seven nine in the second leg. Two and eight. I'm going to throw in Lamari just in case there's an upset. And then uh, I'm going to go two five four two four five in the last race for a $60 ticket on uh, my pick four. Um, but if you uh, do want a single daddy's a legend, uh, I think the uh, your all strategy in the last race, that's probably your, your best shot, it looks like, certainly to catch a price, I would think, uh, would be in that last leg of the pick four. Uh, best of luck with uh, your wagers. Uh, another challenging card on this uh, Thursday at Keeneland. Two more days left to talk about here on the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com.